Thanks so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed this message brought to you by Friday Night Light Ministries. For more information, check us out on the web at FridayNightLight.us. It's about your love, yeah, yeah. As we leave People are getting freedom up here. If you want to come back up and have... Lexi, if you could pray with her further. Just to have you continue to pray. Yeah. I just felt like I said it. So I wanted to share something with you that God had laid on my heart. I don't want to say it's a sermon message. It's something that God had laid on my heart. And I believe it's for all of us. But before I share it, if you feel like you need to come up here and get prayer, I want you to come up. Because people are getting free up here. I'm sorry. God had shown me a picture of new seasons for leaders. That what... FNL is a celebration service. FNL on Friday nights. What we're doing, it's going deeper, right? In the spirit, in what God's planning for His the move in His kingdom. And as He's doing that and going deeper, calling His, I'm gonna say generals, because I know that everybody that comes to FNL generally are generals and leaders in their own right but he said so many of them are settling for good when they could have best and he gave me this picture of a swim coach I shared this with Jared he gave me this picture of a swim coach who was walking along the side of a pool coaching a swimmer and he was eating donuts a great swimmer and now he's coaching and training people to be great swimmers even Olympic swimmers but if he was to jump in that water at this season of his life and try to be an Olympic champion he would fail he knew a lot about swimming he was good at it but he wasn't great at it where he was at in this season of his life was to train the Olympic swimmers, the Olympic champions that were coming up. Sydney. And as he was sharing that with me, he said, basically to let you know, you're going to have a couple ways that you're going to know what's best and what's good. What's best, what you're best at, you love it. You love it. You love doing it, and you it come you come to it naturally. It may have it's like a dream, and it may seem like somehow it doesn't fit or you can't accomplish. Because usually those kinds of dreams, God has to tweak them for us, and or only it's only accomplishable through Him. The second way, as He said, it's gonna He's gonna confirm it through people. They'll tell you, man, you're fantastic at that. You should do that more. You're great at this. You're great at that. You know it's not like, you know, they might compliment you on other things, but this thing, you know, it's what you're called to do. But a lot of people are trying to get in the pool and swim around, and they're trying to be great at what they're good at. But they're not standing up in the season and in the place of what they're great at. Many of you as leaders, you're not called to wield the weapon that you're making. You're called to make the weapon. You're a leader. That's what God's calling you to do. It's a new season.
when you find your main purpose in life, your main call, and you do that, that's what you're going to be great at. You have to start embracing and believing that that is possible to achieve. God wants to do that in you and through you. It might look a little different than what you thought you were going to do, how you're going to do it, but it will be in that same vein. Will it be easy? No, it's not going to be easy. Because when you're a leader and he's calling you to do that, it takes pioneering. It takes visioneering. That's a word. There you go. Thank you. Confirmation. It's gonna, you're going to have to roll your sleeves up and dig in. It's not going to be easy. And it's not going to maybe look exactly like the way you think it's going to look because there's pastors, teachers, preacher, uh, pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophets, apostles, and a host of other giftings, right? And if your specific gifting, you see that from your point of view, and you want everything to look like the model from your point of view, it's you're not going to ever achieve that. At FNL, when we sit down at the table, our team, the, everybody has different callings and giftings there. And sometimes we don't agree. We agree to disagree, and that's okay. We, we move forward on the things that we do agree on in unity and love. That's why you have the experience of what you're having now. Because we understand, you know, I'm not a teacher or whatever. You know, I understand that my part fits and it's going to have to be molded to fit specifically as God over time, little by little, as a leader. And God's doing that in me. And he's doing that in all of us. And that's called submitting and it's called serving. Little by little, it'll mold and it'll fit. That doesn't, it's not going to happen overnight. I have to say what I see from my position, hear what they're saying, what they're seeing. I have to listen to them. You'll know it's in your heart because you'll want to do it even if you do it for free. Talk to someone about that. God had told me this already and someone had said that to me. Somebody here, I loved it. They were like, I love horses. I love horses. And they are like, when I was 18, I went to a horse barn and I told them, I said, I just want to serve here with, you know, because I love horses. And they are like, well, we don't have any job positions. They are like, I know I'm going to do it for free. And they end up being a barn manager in a couple months it says a lot about them a lot about the, their potential and God's calling their life and embracing that you know you guys I don't know if many of you remember when I came here to this property I wanted to quit ministry I was going to start a farm I was falling after this guy who had wrote a book and had videos he's a millionaire and it was how to make $100,000 on a third of an acre that you don't own and I was like, well, this property has three acres. I'm going to be rich. I'm just going to start a farm. I was like, I have never farmed in my life, but I was like, I'm going to farm. And part of what led me here, um, not just the fact that it was totally miraculous, which I knew it was, but I didn't see how that was going to fit because I was going to farm vegetables. And I gave up that dream because God tweaked it. And one day, I was walking from the barn to the house. You've already heard this, some of you. And he said, why do you think you came here? I said, I wanted to farm. He said, who put that desire in your heart? I said, you did. And he said, they weren't all farmers. They weren't all fishermen. He said, I called you to be a farmer of men. I wept. He was like, I know your heart. I know what will lead you. James 2, 14, 17 says, what good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if, I, if you say you have faith 
but you don't show it by your actions. Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing and you say goodbye and have a good day. Stay warm and eat well. But then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Another way you'll know what your calling is, is you'll come into a place and you'll see what's missing. You'll be surprised that nobody else sees it. They're like, man, they're really missing this. And you're like, you know, why doesn't somebody get up and do something about it? Because God sent you. There's no such thing as luck or coincidence. Period. There isn't. If you are there and you see it, God sent you there. Roll up your sleeves. Prepare to pioneer. Prepare to plow the field. It's your time. It's your season. You can do it. I know it seems impossible. Yes, it would be easier to get into someone else's field and go and plow their vision. Okay? But God's giving you a field, and you'll know if it is. Just follow the leading of the Lord. It won't be easy. It'll be a God-sized dream. But it'll be in your sweet spot. You'll know it's you. At FNL here, we wear a lot of hats. We empower leaders that lead, and we let them lead. Leaders understand the cost, and they embrace it with joy. There's a cost. I get it. I won't think bad of anyone who doesn't step up and do it. I won't. I won't. We understand it. Our kids understand it. We get it. Everything we own belongs to him. The house, the barn, we'll sign it over. Our cars, we don't need to own anything. It's all his. He gives it back in so many ways. It's all worth it. I understand, but it ain't easy. And there's days I don't like it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Recently had a discussion. But thank you, Victor. It was, it's tough. We're here for you. We believe in you. And so does God. We want, we don't believe in luck and coincidence. We want to see you succeed. We want to see you accomplishing your dreams and your visions. It doesn't have to be necessarily inside this building, but we also believe that as God is calling people here to FNL, you know, like I said, rarely it's a new believer. Even Montana, he's not a new believer at all. <laughs> okay. What God's doing here is in preparation, and we're going to be doing some vision casting for some things he's sharing with us that are coming up, and I'm just telling you, it's been knocking my socks off. What God's preparing to use us for, what he brought us here together for, this next step, the next season for us, it's incredible. And it's going to require... I believe all of us here, I do believe that, when we start sharing it. To make your dreams come true by making other people's dreams come true, guys. That's what it's all about. So seek to endeavor to know God's will, what he's doing in you specifically. The first thing he's going to do, and you'll know where, we want anyone to be able to come here and attend and, and get whatever God's wanting to give them because we also believe that God is wanting to break down the walls of um, denomination and the division that, that denomination causes and we want to be able to fellowship and be here with anyone but I want to tell you God puts you in a family he does do that I'm not saying we have it all together here we don't we're a part of what he's doing in the world today there's hearts, kidneys, skin, bones. There's a bone in the tip of my fingertip. There's a my cuticle and my nail. <laughs> I'm willing to scrub the toilets. I just am willing to do whatever. You know, we had a ministry, we had a worship team meeting, and uh, they were like, you know, do you feel like you're a part of it? I'm like, I can dust the mics. Final thing that God spoke to me said, a lot of people want to be leaders. This is this is the moral right here. A lot of people want to be leaders. 
and they want to be primary leaders. You can be. It doesn't matter how old you are. You can be a primary leader, but primary leaders are primary servants. You will serve your way up the ladder. Yes, you will. That's the only way you'll go up in God's kingdom. It is upside down. Nate, we love you. Everybody bless Nate. Love you, man. Him and his wife are heading off to missions, ministry. Nate, we love you. It was awesome. Thank you for blessing us. Love you, bro. Thank you. Primary servants. Get in, have a heart, serve where you feel you're called, roll up your sleeves. It's not going to be easy. If you don't know where to start, and if you feel like, well, I don't feel like I'm making a connection, um, reach out, guys. We love you. People here want you, you know. We're not, we're not babies here. We're not new Christians. You know, we're going to reach out and help you if you've stumbled. Absolutely. If you're need, you need help. Call us. Let us know you need help. I remember one time someone wasn't feeling good, and they told us that, and uh, they said, I was laying at home sick in bed. And I was like, well, we didn't know, or we would have been there. I would have brought you chicken soup. <laughs> I was like, you know, they thought no one cared about him. I was like, honest to God, we would have been there, but we didn't know. Pick up the phone. Get the band app. Post, hey, I need prayer. I need something. Reach out. There's no shame in that. That's the devil. That's pride. If you can't reach out for help, that's pride. We need each other. The devil wants to part us out. He's putting you in a family. You may not know exactly how to get whatever he's calling you to do started. Serve helping someone else where they're at. Start sharing your vision. We want to hear it. Start endeavoring to do that. It won't be easy, but it can be accomplished. So I just want to encourage you. God has a plan for your life. And we love you. We'd love to be your family. We, but wherever, we want you to be plugged into a family and serving and accomplishing your call or someday launching off and starting your own ministry, whatever it is. We're believing that God's doing that in people. And I know I know for a fact there are people here who God's doing that in their lives. Soon we'll see them. I say soon. It could be a year, two years. could be whatever. Um, we want to have that. We want that. Jacob Alska. God's calling him to preach. Yeah. Next week. soon he's going to be up here he's going to be preaching he's going to be achieving his vision that god is calling him to do we believe in him we see it in him he's the testimony is coming from him he's exercising his gifts he's speaking he's preaching he's doing it and we're going to all get a chance to hear him our brother our part of our family and see him growing in that we want to see that in all of you some of us it may be up here some of us may not <laughs> so I just want to encourage you in that. Again, if anybody here needs prayer for whatever, or even to talk about whatever, please connect with anyone here. Try to, you know, we don't, we should wear tags. You can see like those who are like, you're all our family. That's it. We love every single one of you. I think you guys know that. We consider every one of you part of our family. We know that what you're doing is God, and we want to be here to bless you and to serve you. What he's getting ready to call us to do is major servanthood in this next season. It's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be awesome, and I cannot wait to share it with you. It's going to require all of us stepping up our A-game in, in the area of servanthood or whoever God's calling to do that. So, anyone else care? Jared, back to you.
should call his grandchildren up here and pray over them this is not like super public knowledge so but he should be discreet but he had a heart attack a week and a half ago he was in the hospital for three days he got back but we want to pray for him while you guys circle it up we want to pray you guys will be seeing him Please pray if you. Yeah. yeah. We 
We thank you, God, for Frank Huff. We thank you for saving his life, God. We thank you that he has been such a good role model of a life of faith, God. He loves you. He puts you first, God. He believes deeply in you and wants his entire family, and he's believing they'll all serve you, God. So we just thank you for his life, God. We pray that you heal him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, God, that anything, any damage in his heart is repaired in the name of Jesus. We want him to walk in health, God. We want him to walk with full breath, God. We want him to be healthy and whole and healed in every way, shape, and form, God, because you're not done with him yet. You're not done with him yet, God. So we thank you that his grandchildren are here tonight, God. What a testament, God, to his life, God. They're here. They're standing in the gap for him, God. So we pray. We declare that he will live. We dispel fear. We dispel it. We thank you, God, right now. He will live, God. You need him, God. You need him here. We need examples like him, God. He's not done, God. We just thank you for him, Lord. So we just pray right now, God, that we believe you're restoring to him right now strength, that you're repairing the heart muscle, God. Anything else that may have looked like it's damaged, God, that you're correcting it and you're healing it, God. We thank you for it, God. We thank you for it, God. We thank you that you're doing it for him. His grandchildren are standing in the gap. I pray that you would let faith rise up in them. And that, God, wherever their faith is, that they would move into your faith, supernatural faith, beyond what they're able to believe for, God. I believe that you would do that for them, God. We thank you for it. Thank you, Lord. So we had done this once, and I mean, we had a face-to-face where a guy was uh, in the hospital, and um, Daryl and Robin knew him, and we envisioned him set in front of us on a table and we laid we all in our hearts stretched forth our hands and envisioned laying hands on him and praying for him he actually and he was like in a wreck he was like brain dead they were like I think gonna pull the plug on him or something he ended up getting fully restored and healed and coming off of that it, it was like incredible we're gonna do that right now for Frank I want everybody here in this room right now in this Stretch your hands forward, especially his grandkids. Close your eyes. See your grandpa sitting right there. We're setting our hands on him. We're laying hands on him right now. And in Jesus' name, let your faith rise up, guys. Be excited that he's healed. Don't be worried. Don't be fearful. We're excited right now, God. We lay hands on Frank. We declare and we impart healing to his body 100%. We thank you, God, that from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, he's healed. We thank you that he's rising up in the morning. He's going to sleep well in the evening, God. He's feeling strength returning to his body. We thank you, God, that you're healing him, God, in Jesus' name. Healing him, God, in Jesus' name. We thank you that he's healed in Jesus' name. And his grandkids stand in the gap. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to remind all of you right now, once you've been prayed for for healing or you've prayed for someone else like this, wherever you're at, if it comes to your mind to doubt that or to be fearful, you challenge that and you say, no, we have prayed according to his word. By his stripes, we are healed. We were healed. And there's so many other scriptures on healing. And we have it now by faith. And Satan, we rebuke you. We rebuke those thoughts. We do have it. We all prayed. But also according to his word, it says, if two or three are gathered in my name, whatever they ask in my name, according to my will, we know this is his will. That's why we have the confidence that it will come to pass, that it's coming to pass. So God, we just thank you that we've done that. And we thank you for the answer to this prayer. And we thank you in advance. For it, God, we give you praise and thank you in advance for it, God. Thank you, God, for it, for healing Frank in Jesus' name. Amen. I also want to say that while our faith is up, if anyone here has something they want prayer for, for physical healing, I would encourage you to get up and come up here right now while our faith, we're praying for that. If that's something you need or want, I would do it. 
if we do, Amy, I'll have you come up too, and Brian, in a minute. If, if someone needs it, wants it. Also, thank you, Lord. I was going to say something. I forgot what I was going to say. That's okay. Could be the Holy Spirit. Okay, they have another song. Let your faith rise, guys. Whatever you have. God wants to meet whatever your need is. If it's not just physical healing, whatever it is, God wants to meet your needs. And he will meet your needs. Let your faith rise.
Remember, friends, that when I first came to you to let you in on God's master stroke, I didn't try to impress you with polished speeches and the latest philosophy. I deliberately kept it plain and simple. First Jesus and who he is, and then Jesus and what he did, Jesus crucified. We have a lot of people that come here to FNL that I, you could say are other denominations. 
Seventh-day Adventists, Lutherans, Catholic, any spectrum of what some might say Pentecostal, charismatic, uh, full gospel, whatever. I just want to tell you guys, it's time to get over denomination. We, can, we need to show the world what Jesus wants in the world. The world doesn't see denominations. The world sees the church. One body. It's time that we show the world we can come together and be the body of Christ. We can start it right here. And, and, and I believe it's starting all over. But we can do it here for our region. We can join with others that may be doing it in the region. And it may look different. I just encourage you. You know, you may hear some people speaking in tongues. Some people may not be getting up and worshiping the way you think they should. Guys, it's okay. Connect with the Lord. Just connect with the Lord. He's doing it. I believe everybody here, in their own way, God is doing it, and he's changing their hearts. I really do believe that. He's doing something new in the earth today. He said it's a return to the old. We don't have to have vain debate. That doesn't mean we can't talk and we can't share. But we need to love one another. And he said in the last days, we'll know when it's coming to pass. There will be unity. He said, you'll see it by our love for one another. That's how we'll know. And if we're constantly nitpicking and whatever, you know, Jesus, Jesus crucified. God loves us. He's the Father. He sent His Son. That's why we're here. He's God. He's God. So, I love you guys. I want to we're going to keep worshiping. I just feel like we should, if you guys are okay with that. But I also want to not have captive audience. So if you feel like, hey, I'm ready to go, but I've been stuck, uh, and it's okay. We don't judge anyone, guys. We don't judge anyone. Um, so if you got to go, you got to go. We get it. Some of us are going to stay. We're going to continue to worship. Take time. You can fellowship. You can hang out. You can worship from the back. You can come up here, whatever is going on. We love you guys, but you're also released, and we're going to close the service. Um, in that sense, for those who may need to leave or whatever, God, we just praise your name. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the answers to all the prayers we prayed. We thank you for healing and restoration of souls, hearts, and minds, and bodies. Um, and we just thank you for what you're doing. We give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. It's all about you. It's all about you. And it's because of you that as imperfect people, we can do perfect things. It's because of you. We give you the recognition you deserve, God. And we release the service to you. And I just pray for everybody here that as they leave this place unchanged, no, changed in every way, that they would go to those who were unchanged and they would begin to spread your word, God, and change the world around them, God. I just thank you that we're going to be hearing testimony to that coming back to us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Love you guys.
the voice of triumph. Shout out to God with the voice of praise. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Shout out to God with the voice of praise. If you enjoyed this message today, be sure to like and subscribe. For more messages or to get plugged in, visit FridayNightLight.us.